Today, Hillsdale Free Methodist will be launching a host of digital resources called Right Now Media. If our church has your email address, you should be getting an invitation shortly. If you do not receive an invitation and would like to be added, please contact the church office at hfmcoffice at gmail.com. Right Now Media provides a variety of resources for all ages. There are devotionals, Bible studies, and entertainment for kids, teens, and adults. HFM is paying the subscription for our entire church family. There will be no cost to you individually. We hope you will find this a great resource and a great source of encouragement. Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to Youth Sunday. Uh, my name is Kurt, and I am the youth director here. I've been filling in as Pastor Dave has been transitioning into the senior role. Um, anyway, uh, we got a unique opportunity here, uh, being Youth Sunday. I would like to tell you a little bit about our youth programs that we've been doing this year, uh, just to let you guys know what's been going on. So anyway, our uh, youth program meets on Wednesday nights and Sunday nights, and our Wednesday nights is more of our outreach focus. And we have an awesome team of 11 youth leaders that uh, I've been privileged to work with. And uh, while I will be up here today and my wife will be up here later, there's a whole bunch of leaders and a whole bunch of things that go on behind the scenes. And I couldn't do the ministry without them. And quite frankly, we wouldn't want to um, while we're up here. Uh, anyway, they are behind the scenes and they're the ones that will work with a small group of teens. They're the ones that will lead a group of teens in discussions about the lessons. We also have a rotation of seven leaders who are on our teaching schedule on Wednesday nights. We've been going through the book of Ephesians. We just wrapped that up. But it's been exciting to see the, just the different personalities and uh, the different stories that come out from having such a, such a wide variety of, of, of people uh, helping out with the teaching. And then Sunday Night Programs is a smaller group meant for discipleship, and that meets at our home, and the church has provided the finances to, uh, as, to buy meals for that. Uh, we make those, prepare those, and then share those with the teens. And uh, that has been just an in, more intimate family style environment where we get to build the relationships and the trust with the teens and then uh, share God's word with them. And uh, earlier this year, we went through a book called Experiencing God, just helping teens partner, or, or try to find where God is uh, working in their lives and how to partner with him. And now um, we've been moving into a series that's temporary and hold, but it's a, a drive through history of the land of Israel. And so the teens get to watch these movies and see the sites where the original apostles uh, walked. And give, it gives a little bit of context to the Word of God. So as they're reading the scriptures, these places come alive a little bit more. So that's a little bit about what's going on in the youth ministry. So anyway, just a couple announcements as we get going today. You've seen already uh, Pastor Jody shared a clip on Right Now Media that we are launching today. And we would love uh, we would love to have you guys sign up for that. It's a great resource. And uh, specifically, youth, I want to ask you guys to sign up for that. If you have an email... Uh, um, great, send it to me. If you don't, uh, you can use your parents' email, that's fine, and use their account, that's great. But we hope to do launch some studies that we can do online while we're uh, separate. But that resource would be a way so that you can watch them and then maybe we can get together on Zoom or uh, group chat and discuss those, uh, video, those videos together and what we're learning and keep some discipleship going and see, keep some conversations going and just be able to connect with one another. And then uh, also another announcement, parents, this one's for you. Our best way to get information to you is through our Facebook group page. And I know not all of you have Facebook, but if you do, we'd love to have you. So if you go on to Facebook and search HFM Youth, uh, the group should show up. You won't be able to see what's posted there, but you can uh, send an, you can request to be added, and we will add you to that. Um, but anyway, it's just a great way to communicate what events, what things we're doing, how we can stay connected during this time. Uh, recently, one of our leaders, Anna Grace, just launched a Instagram challenge, and it's on the Facebook site too. Um, uh, a truth or dare challenge for the leaders and the teens. I want to give props to Corey and Vicki and uh, Kira for jumping right onto that. It's been fun to see you guys having fun in your own, in the safety of your own homes right now. And just knowing that you're out there and uh, we're staying connected as a church family. It's been awesome. So um, at this time, uh, 
we're going to move into our youth service. So uh, there's a couple things. Uh, coming right up here in just a few moments, my daughter Abby will be sharing with you the call of worship um, today. And then uh, Olivia Turner is going to be doing the auxiliary text. And then after that, you will actually see a, a music video by Caleb Diener. Uh, he came here to the church and played on the piano earlier this week. And uh, Dave, Pastor Dave recorded him. It's just a special, a special piece that I really enjoyed. So, and I hope you guys will too. So, at this point, I want to turn your attention uh, to our memory verse for the week. It's Psalms forty-six, ten. It says, "Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth." And that's just an appropriate verse for everything we're going through with the craziness. My head's having a hard time wrapping my mind around some of the things going on. It's just changing so fast day to day. And uh, I, this verse, I think, is key. Let's listen to it. Let's be still and know that in the midst of all this, he's still God. He's still got his hand on everything. Uh, so let's pray, and then we'll get started. So, Lord Jesus, we come before you today. And Lord, we pray with everything going on that we would be able to calm our minds, calm our hearts, and look, for, look to you for our guidance. That Lord, that through everything, our souls can be at rest and at peace knowing that you are in control. And Lord, we pray for the service today. Lord, we pray that uh, your word would speak clearly to our hearts. That, Lord, we, our minds and our ears would be open to hear what you'd, you'd want us to hear. Lord, we thank you so much for your grace and your mercy that you have bestowed upon us, Lord. That, Lord, that we can, that we can come together even digitally in this age to, to continue to meet as a, the HFM family. And, Lord, thank you so much for your, uh, for your forgiveness, for your mercy. And, Lord, that we even have a desire to meet and to fellowship with one another and have a desire to meet and fellowship with you. Uh, we thank you. It's by your grace alone. And we pray that you would, again, come, challenge us, and talk to us today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The call to worship today is from Psalms 34. I will exalt the, I will, the Lord at all times. His praise will always be on my lips. I will glory in the Lord. Let the afflicted hear and rejoice. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the one who takes refuge in him. Fear the Lord, you his holy people. For those who hear him lack nothing. The lions may growl weak and hungry, but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. Come, my children, listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Whoever of you loves life and desires to see many good days, keep your tongue from evil and your lips from telling lies. Turn from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are attentive to their cry. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil, to bolt out their name from the earth. The righteous cry out, and the Lord who hears them. He delivers them from all their troubles. The Lord close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. The righteous person may have many troubles, but the Lord delivers him from them all. He protects all his bones. Not one of them will be broken. Evil will slay the wicked, the foes righteous will be condemned. The Lord will rescue his servants. No one who takes refuge in him will be condemned. Good morning. Today we'll be reading from Romans chapter 8, verses 1 through 11. Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, because through Christ Jesus the law of the Spirit of life set me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law was powerless to do, in that it was weakened by the sinful nature, God did by sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful man to be a sin offering. And so he condemns sin in sinful man, in order that the righteous requirements of the law might be fully met in us, who do not live according to the sinful nature, but according to the Spirit. Those who live according 
to the sinful nature have their minds set on what the nature desires, but those who live in accordance with the Spirit have their minds set on what the Spirit desires. The mind of sinful man is death, but the mind controlled by the Spirit is life and peace. The sinful mind is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law, nor can it do so. Those controlled by the sinful nature cannot please God. You, however, are controlled not by the sinful nature, but by the Spirit. If the Spirit of God lives in you, and if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ Jesus, he does not belong to Christ. But if Christ is in you, your body is dead because of sin, yet your spirit is alive because of righteousness. And if the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his Spirit who lives in you. This is God's word. My name is Stephanie Charleville. I'm going to be doing the message today. And for those of you who do not know me, I'm one of the youth leaders here at the church. So I, this is Youth Sunday. So there's not a lot of pressure, right? <laughs> Just kidding. Um, okay, so we are going to dive into our message. Um, go ahead and open your Bibles up to John 5. This is a continuation of the message from last week. Pastor Keith talked about this man that was at the pool and he was healed. And Jesus told him to get up and walk, and he did. And the Jews saw him, and they're like, why are you doing this? It's the Sabbath day. And that's kind of where our story picks up. Um, so first of all, I just want to, want you guys to understand what the Sabbath actually is. The Sabbath was a day that God had actually planned for it to be holy, set aside to rest. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and he worked six days, and as a, it, he, the seventh day was a day that was a rest. In the, um, in the Old Testament, there's a lot of scriptures that talk about how holy this day is supposed to be. It's actually part of the Ten Commandments. Like, if you broke this law, you could be stoned. Like, it was a super serious day. If you were caught doing anything, um, you could be killed. And so that's kind of a little bit of a background. Now, the Jews in this story were kind of like the religious leaders. They had all these extra laws um, that allowed people to do some work or not work, depending on, you know, what they wanted to do. So they had 39 activities that were forbidden. And that was, in this situation, you were not allowed to pick up a mat and carry it to another spot. That was a no-no. But when they confronted this man... He kind of said, well, listen, somebody told me to pick it up. And he said, well, it's Jesus. So that's where our story kind of um, 
that's where our story picks up. So we're going to take a minute and read the text. Hello, HFM family. Our reading today is from John chapter 5, verses 16 through 30. So, because Jesus was doing these things on the Sabbath, the Jewish leaders began to persecute him. In his defense, Jesus said to them, My father is always at his work to this very day, and I too am working. For this reason, they tried all the more to kill him. Not only was he breaking the Sabbath, but he was even calling God his own father, making himself equal with God. Jesus gave them this answer. Very truly, I tell you, the son can do nothing by himself. He can only do what he sees his father doing, because whatever the father does, the son also does. For the father loves the son and shows him all he does. Yes, and he will show him even greater works than these, so that you will be amazed. For just as the father raises the dead and gives them life, even so the son gives life to whom he is pleased to give it. Moreover, the Father judges no one, but has entrusted all judgment to the Son, that all may honor the Son just as they honor the Father. Whoever does not honor the Son does not honor the Father who sent him. Very truly, I tell you, whoever hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life and will not be judged, but has crossed over from death to life. Very truly, I tell you, the time is coming and has now come when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God and those who heal will live. For as the Father has life in himself, so he has granted the Son also to have life in himself, and he has given him authority to judge because he is the Son of Man. Do not be amazed at this, for time is coming when all who are in their graves will hear his voice and come out. Those who have done what is good will rise to live, and those who have done what is evil will rise to be condemned. By myself I can do nothing. I judge only as I heal, and my judgment is just, for I seek not to please myself, but him who sent me. John chapter 5, verses 16 through 30. As you can see, it's kind of crazy. Like, why do they care about the fact that Jesus healed a man on the Sabbath? It's doing good, right? I mean, he just made a person who is not able to walk walk and yet they were wanting to kill him because he worked on the sabbath it's kind of interesting but you know as i was preparing for this message you know everything happened with this coronavirus and um as i was thinking about it right now we are in our sabbath right now um and i don't want to get in an argument that's totally not the point but there's a lot of people that have all these rules or expectations of what this Sabbath that we're in right now should look like. Okay, well, you're allowed, you can only be in your house. Well, no, you're, some people say you're allowed to go for a walk. No, 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 you can't. You should only stay in your house and only go out for an emergency. Other people say, well, you can go to the park or do these kinds of things. It's okay. Just don't be around people. So we have all these extra rules. And I'm not trying to say either way, it's totally not the point. But as I was thinking about it, that's what reminded me of like, we are in our Sabbath right now. And we even have people arguing about it. And it's interesting that in this moment, um, when Jesus was confronted by the Jewish leaders, he didn't take this time to actually explain what the Sabbath really was. In other times, it, well, when I was doing this study, it actually said that Jesus confront, or Jesus actually did miracles on the Sabbath quite frequently. Um, he was constantly doing good on the Sabbath. And it was almost, and a lot of commentaries, commentaries would say, he almost did this as to kind of like poke at them. Be like, see, see, this is not what the Sabbath is about. And a lot of times Jesus actually did say, listen, this is the point of the Sabbath. But in this moment, he didn't. In this moment, he did not. But what did, well, so what is he trying to communicate about the Sabbath? And what does it have to do with us? Um, I'm just going to read this quote real quick from John Maxwell. Um, this, the purpose of the Sabbath was to give the Israelites time to reflect, not on their work, but on God's. They were to find, um, they were then to find refreshment in knowing that their physical needs were supplied, not by their toil, but by the God who had created the universe and given them life. Guys, that was... The purpose. 
I like this one too by John Phillips. The Jewish Sabbath was only a picture, an anticipated rest based on the finished work of Christ. This whole idea of a Sabbath was really a picture, but what kind of a picture? What is the reality? Pastor Keith always says that as we're going through John, uh, John that these signs are pointing to a, a, a reality beyond this. And I believe that this text is also, it's talking about something else. So what is he talking about? Well, while I was thinking about this, I kept getting Psalms 46. And I'm just going to read it real quick. So I'm going to talk, it's actually your memory verse for this week. But I'm just going to read verse 1 right now. God is our refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth gives way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, and though its water, er, the mountains quake with their surging. Guys, the mountains quake. The mountains fall. Like, can you guys just picture this for a moment? These mountains, have you guys ever seen mountains? They are huge and strong. And they're something that if you were to um, really think about, they're things that we can't even imagine just all of a sudden crumbling and being no more. And yet there's a lot of things in our life right now that relates to this. How many of you can relate to the fact that our world is crumbling? We see this. We have seen that um, schools we never would have thought would be canceled for this long, have all of a sudden crumbled. We see jobs, all of a sudden we thought we were secure and they are going away. We see the stock market and the, how it's going all crazy. Things that we used to feel secure, things that we thought were unmovable in a way, are crumbling right before our eyes. And even the fact that we can't even go to the store and get toilet paper when we need. I mean, who would have thought that that would be something that we would take for granted? But here we are. Not being able to find toilet paper when you need it. But anyway, um, so anyway, I'm going to continue with this Psalms. But I just want you guys to get a picture that right now our mountains are crumbling. All right, so verse 7. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Come and see the work of the Lord. He makes war cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. But be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations and I will be exalted among the earth. Guys, right now, we are in a moment of having to be still. We are in a Sabbath rest, if you will. We are in a time where God has actually gifted us with, like, what, three weeks or two weeks or however long it's going to last of just being and resting. And I know it can be hard. Kurt and I went on this um, retreat a few years ago, and it was actually like five days long. And the whole purpose was a Sabbath rest. And you were really supposed to do nothing. They provided all the meals. They provided, um, you know, you had a place to sleep. You didn't have to worry about cleaning it. It was like all taken care of. Um, So it was just a time to just be. And it was actually really hard to just rest. And I know a lot of you guys probably feel that way too. Like you're getting anxious and you just feel like you need to do something. And you almost feel worthless because I can't complete anything. And the jobs that you do get done um, just don't seem to satisfy. And yet I keep coming back to this thing. Um, The purpose of the Sabbath was given to the Israelites or us as a time to reflect, not on their work, but on God's. They were to find refreshment in knowing that their physical needs were supplies, not by their toil, but by God's, who had created the universe and given them life. Guys, I believe that that is what God is wanting us to do right now, is to be still and know that he is God. So the question to be asked is this, or the question to be answered is this. Why did Jesus respond the way he did when accused of working on the Sabbath? What was he revealing about himself? And what does it, does it mean for us during this time of Sabbath or waiting? And the, I believe the answer is this. Jesus didn't need to defend himself or explain what the law of the Sabbath was intended. For instead, 
he declared who he is. He is what he he is who he actually what we actually need in life. It doesn't come through the law or the the rules or any other false security. Life can only be found in Jesus, and we need to know Jesus for who he is. So the word for the day is no. Be still and know. So what, what do we need to know about Jesus? What is he revealing about himself? Well, I believe number one is Jesus is God. And I know that sounds kind of, well, duh. Um, but if you think about it, Jesus and God are one. How many of us struggle with the ideas of God being all the attributes? I know sometimes we say attributes. Maybe you don't understand what attributes are. The characteristics, the things that make God who he is. Um, When I think about, you know, God of the Old Testament, sometimes I think of, you know, God the Father, God of the Old Testament, and that's the God of wrath or anger or judgment. Um, But then there's this, New Testament God, who's Jesus or um, God the Son, and they're separate. He's the God of love and kindness and mercy. And yet what Jesus is proclaiming here is not that they're, they're two. They are one. They are both one. They cannot be separated. The attributes that they each have from the Old Testament, the New Testament, or whatever, are together. They're one. They are both love. They are both justice. They're both mercy. They're both kindness. And it's important to recognize that. Um, I'm just going to read that part real quick. I tell you the truth. The son can do nothing by himself. He can only do what what he sees his father doing. Because whatever the father does, the son also does. For the father loves the son and shows him all he does. Guys, they are one. And to know Jesus is to know God. They are one. And it's super important that we remember that. Um. I'm just going to read this quote real quick. I think it's in your sermon outlines um, by C.S. Lewis. I'm trying here to prevent anyone from saying the really foolish thing that people often say about him. I'm ready to accept Jesus as a great moral teacher, but I don't accept his claim to be God. So that is one thing we must not say. A man who is merely a man and said the sort of things Jesus said would not be a great moral teacher. He would either be a lunatic on the same level of, with a man um, who says he is a poached egg, or else he is a devil. You make your choice. Either this man was and is the son of God, or else he's a madman or something worse. You can shut him up, and you can spit on his face, and you can call him a demon, or you can fall on his face, or call, fall on his feet, and call him Lord and God. But let's not do it any patronizing nonsense about him being a great moral teacher. He has not left us op- that op- open to us, and he did not intend to. Guys, the Jews knew exactly what Jesus was proclaiming right here. He is proclaiming to be God. And there's no, you cannot just say, okay, well, I'm, I, I believe in him being a good person. He is making that divide. You either accept him or you you don't. You have to make that choice. Um, and it's important for us right now as we go through this, this time of chaos that we're kind of in to remember that he is God. Because right now it's hard for us to kind of wrap up, wrap in our minds that he is a God of love in the midst of all this chaos. Can we accept that he is God in the midst of all this? Why is he allowing this hurt? Why is he allowing this pain? And yet, that is what he is talking about here. He cannot separate himself from part of who he is. It, is. it is all of who he is at the same exact time. If you're struggling with understanding the sovereignty of God, then we need to, you need to spend some time knowing that he is in control of this world. He did not all of a sudden just wake up and be like, well, I didn't know this was going to happen. Now what do I do? He knew exactly that we were going to go through this that everything this happened, he knew he allowed to happen for some reason. And the flip side of that is he is a good God. God, one, one of my favorite verses is Psalms 139, and it says that not one of, our, one of your days has passed by that God did not know. Nothing can happen inside of your life without him knowing about it. And the flip side is he promises that everything that we go through if we allow him, 
He can bring good. It's hard for us to admit during this time that he is good, that he is loving, that he is also sovereign. But guys, that's who he is. And that's just a part of who he is. God is asking us to stop and know, learn more about who he actually is in the midst of all this chaos. Because he alone is the one who has the answer. Um, One of my favorite verses is when Moses goes to God and he's like, I just can't. I can't continue. I'm just struggling. I mean, this is paraphrasing, but um, he just, he wants, in a way, I feel like he just, ugh, he just can't. And you know what he asks for? His presence. I want to know your presence. The Lord says, my presence will go with you, and I will give you rest. And then Moses pretty much says, listen, if your presence doesn't go with us, please don't send us up from here. And then Moses asks, show me your glory. Show me who you are. And that is exactly what God did. He could, Moses couldn't see the, his face because anybody who saw the face of God before Jesus came would have been instantly killed. So Jesus had, or God had to cover him. But he got to see the back of him. And this is what Jesus or God proclaimed about himself. He said, So as he passed in front of Moses, proclaiming, The Lord, the Lord, the compassionate and gracious God, slow to anger, abounding in love and faithfulness, maintaining love to the thousands and forgiving wickedness and rebellion and sin. Yet he does not leave the guilty unpunished. He punishes the children and their children for the sin of the father to the third and fourth generation. Guys, he proclaimed who he is. And after that, Moses became shiny. It's my favorite story because I, oh, I just can't wait to see God in all of his glory. And that's what I constantly pray. Like, God, show me your glory. Show me who you are. Um, I wrote this down in my Bible, and I really have no idea who wrote it. Um, but it has impacted me for a long time. And it relates to that scripture. It says, in the end, God's greatest provision for Moses, or my sense of inadequacy, is simply and profoundly his presence with us. The answer to Moses' persistent pattern of I can't was not, yes, Moses, you can. But he says, I can, I will, and I am. Guys, he is the great I am. And do you recognize him as that? He is the great I am. So we're going to the next point, which is... um, Jesus is Lord. Now, that kind of sounds very similar to God, but it's a little different. Um, The point of the Lord is the fact that one day, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that he is Lord. Everyone will be revealed that he, who he actually is. Everyone will see that and they will fall on their face and worship him, whether they actually wanted to or not. And one day he will judge the earth. It says in verse 27, or wait, 22, 22, the father judges no one, but has entrusted all judgment to the son, that all may honor the son just as they honor the father. Whoever does not honor the son does not honor the father who sent him. <clears throat> Guys, in Phil, um, one day, Every knee will bow down. Every tongue will confess. And there will be a day of judgment. The scripture is pretty clear that we are not, we don't know when that's going to happen. It could come tomorrow. It could come today. It could come years from now. It could come hundreds of years from now. I have no idea. But scripture is pretty clear that we're supposed to be ready. And the problem is, Sometimes we forget that it's coming. And in this moment, I think it's interesting when all this chaos is going around and, you know, we're left thinking about um, in our Sabbath, we're supposed to stop and know. And in this scripture, Jesus points us to the fact that there is going to be a judgment day. There is a day when we are going to stand before him. And that can either be a very scary day That can be the most joyous day of your life. Because I hate to break it to you, but this world, even if they come up with a cure for this coronavirus, 
This world is still a broken and horrible world. It's still going to have death. It's still going to have sickness. It's still going to have sadness. There's still going to be abuse. This world is not where our hope lies. And we need to remember to look forward to the fact that there is going to be a day where God, Jesus will make everything right. But we have to also be ready for that day and remember that we will see him as Lord. I'm just going to quote this from Pastor Keith. He says, think about your own righteousness and presenting it to God. What a joke. You have nothing to honor, offer God. Um, the God of the universe. Even your most pure, righteous deeds fall short of his glory. The only thing that can please God is God. Therefore, the only thing you can offer God of the universe is himself, reflecting in you by the work of the Holy Spirit. That is what brings God glory. That is what pleases God. That is what brings merit to us before God. It is God and God alone. Guys, we have no righteousness. So if we stand before that judge on judgment day, and come with the best work we have to offer, it all falls short. We have no other hope except for Jesus. And that is what he's saying in the scripture, is that he is the life. He is the hope that we have. It doesn't come through something else. And we need, we need to remember that, especially during this time. I love this quote by Chip, Chip Ingram. It says, recognizing God as judge should be sobering to us. But if we know that he is on our side and has intervened for us, he, we can face judgment with confidence. Guys, we don't have to live in fear of that day. In quite the opposite, that is what, that is what we have to, hope on, to hold on to, that hope that we cannot lose. He is the hope. He is that life. And when we, when we try to have something else, everything else crumbles away. In a way, that's what God is trying to get us to see right now. We have nothing in this world to hold on to. Our security in our jobs, in our family, in money, in toilet paper, everything crumbles. Everything else can crumble away, but only Jesus will remain. He is the thing that we need to hold on to. He is Lord. Guys, don't wait until that moment. Don't wait until that day to bow down and have him be Lord of your life. If the enemy can get you to lose hope, he can get you to stop living by faith. Because I truly believe that right now, people are holding on to this sense of hope in so many other things. And it's terrifying because I have a feeling that suicides and so many other things are going to go skyrocketing because there's no hope in this world. We're living in constant fear. People are consumed by it, consumed by fear and worry and anxiety. And guys, I get it. I, I mean, I'm not going to sit here and pretend like I don't have those feelings either. But what I do believe is God is having us stop, be still, and know that he is God, that he is Lord. So what is our, our worship point for the day? Jesus deserves all the glory and honor, which comes through knowing who he is and having our lives reflect that view. One day we will see who he really is, but don't let that be the first time you bow down to him. Guys, I, I searched up what glory and honor is, and I came up, or I, I found this online. It said, glory is a quality inherent in the one being glorified. Glory can be thought of as a mirror that accurately reflects the character of God we glorify. Pastor Keith kind of used this as a definition for glorify. We bring glory to God whenever we reflect the character and attributes of God in our behavior. We especially bring glory to God when our actions are counterintuitive. The natural man in his flesh. Guys, that's what glory is. It's reflecting who God really is. But then we're going to get to honor. Honor originates in our hearts, and it refers to the value that we personally place on someone or something. When we honor God, we demonstrate the high regard we have for him. So guys, are you honoring him? Do you have a high regard for him, or are you not quite seeing him for who he is? Are you letting fear and other things consume us? Are we recognizing that God says that we don't have to live in fear? 
So our gospel application is this. During our Sabbath, dwell on who Jesus is and what he has done for you. Remember him as Lord and give him the honor he deserves. Jesus was not, not liked. This is a quote. Um, you either bow down and worship him as God or you kill him as a lunatic. But let's not come up with any relationship with Jesus that is less than total commitment. Jesus says, you either kill me or you crown me. Guys, there is no other option. And when we stand before judgment day, we're going to be, we're going to be judged based on that. You either honor him or in a way you kill him. You either reject him or you accept him. There is no medium. <clears throat> Guys, Jesus really is our only hope. And I'm just going to, I'm going to end with this kind of thought. The Sabbath is not a day. It's a life-changing attitude. By reflecting on who he is and what he has done, our spirits can be refreshed when we return to our work day, our work world, in all of its pleasures. We can continue to rest in him. That is the Sabbath. John Maxwell. Guys, take this time to evaluate your heart, what you're actually hoping in, what you actually believe about God. Because he's wanting us to stop and be still. Um, I'm just going to close on a word of prayer. Lord, just thank you so much for the fact that you came to be with us. That you came and lived the life that we could not have lived. To die the death that we deserve. And God, I... Thank you that one day we will see you for who you actually are. But God, I pray that we would, we would be, our eyes would be unveiled, that we would be able to see you for who you actually are. That we would be able to, to have a hope during this time that cannot be shaken. Lord, that we would only be trusting in who you are and what you say. Because your promises and who you are is the only thing that we can hold on to. So Lord, let us know more of you. Let your presence wrap itself around us. Let us know more of you. In your name, amen.